Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. I'm Jay Curcio. Today we are cooking Northern Italian at the White Apron with Chef Jay Curcio. There is a lot going on inside this ordinary looking building in downtown Dover, New Hampshire. It's the home and heart of White Apron, a custom catering company that takes the worry out of serving great food for special occasions. This hardworking group of talented chefs knows the ins and outs of what it takes to make a wedding wonderful or a graduation great. Great teams need great leaders. Chef Jay Curcio is the secret ingredient that makes this catering company head and shoulders above the crowd. And today, we get to rub shoulders with him. I won't, I'll just use tongs. Jay, one of my favorite dishes is asobuco, and yeah. I'm glad you're gonna make it today. Me too. And everybody has a little different take on the classic mm -hmm. asobuco, which for me is a dish that you would eat in the fall, you yeah. know, when it's cold and you want something really, really good and hearty. And this is a dish that comes from Northern Italy, from Lombardia, actually. Okay. So we're going to make it uh, your style. Yep. Jay Curcio style. So Correct. Tell me what you did here. So I, I really like braised dishes, first of all. I think it's a true testament to uh, skill set as a chef. Okay, good. It, it yeah, requires a lot of that. technique. Um, but what I find is that, you know, the meat, even though it's full of really great marbling, it's got lots of connective tissue, it's kind of a tough cut of meat, so mm -hmm. we're going to braise it. Mm -hmm. I find that sometimes it's not as flavorful as I want it to be, so I put a marinade on it. Okay, so the reason it's called asobuco, asobuco means bone with a hole in it. Mm -hmm. So we have that bone right, right there. Right, we got the marrow bone right there. Right, yep. and this is the shank. Correct, so that's the leg of the, in this case it's veal, it's yep. leg, of, leg of a cow. Yes. Yep. Okay. So you've got your marinade on there. Now, what marinade did what did you use? So our marinade, we kind of developed this over time. We use lots of fresh herbs. We use oregano. We use rosemary. We use a little fresh parsley, some uh -huh. thyme. Okay. Um, and then we also add to that some white anchovy. We add some oh. lemon. We add a little bit of mustard. Uh, a little bit of sherry vinegar and some olive oil. And that's why you are such a great chef because <laughs> you take chances. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once you have this ready, mm -hmm. then you need to add some vegetables, right? Correct. So carrots and onion, what else? Uh, we're going to put in some fresh herbs. I've got some thyme. I've got some uh, oregano. I've got a little bit of rosemary to kind of mimic the, uh, the marinade. Yeah. And then we're going to go and add some spices. I've got some black pepper, some juniper, mm -hmm. some bay leaves. Okay, um, so this is going to be really flavorful. Yep, we're going to add a little bit of garlic okay. as well when we add in our carrots and our okay. onion. And once we get all that going, then we're going to add in some tomato paste okay. and a little bit of uh, a little bit of bay leaves. All right, I'm hungry, so let's get going. All right, let's do it. All right. You know, really, a, a, a good chef seasons well. For sure. For, for sure, sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's so important is and, to really season. And you know what happens is when you, when you braise meat, you lose a lot of the salt that you put on to that's true to the item so you have right. to really i'm not saying over season yeah. but you need to aggressively season, season yes this. yeah food needs to the the flavor of food needs to be enhanced with salt you yeah can, you can do the same thing with lemon juice or something acidic true. But, but you can't just magically wish for it to taste good you yeah. have to actually help it along a little bit and this is this has got a lot of collagen in it this lots is, of collagen this is going to just be such a a wonderful mouthfeel. The texture of this is just, it falls apart. It's, right. just, it's delicious. And if we do it right, it's exactly what will happen. It'll, yep. Literally, you could eat this without a, without right, a knife. Right, without a knife, exactly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting this in the pan. I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil. Okay, good. So now, you know, if you were in Milan, if you were visiting Milan, this is the dish you absolutely have to have because this is a classic yep. in Milan. You go to the restaurant and you ask for asobuco, which is usually served with uh, a risotto, right? Correct, correct. So. Now what we're going to do. Yeah. So while that's browning, we're going to go have an espresso. <laughs> now that we've let these sit, we're going to flip. And you can see that wow. they have got magnificent they are great. kind of golden brown color. Yeah. Almost dark brown color. Yeah. I'm going to remove these from the pan. Yeah. Because that's the next step in our process. Okay. We've got nice color on both the top and the bottom. They look yeah. really good. Really beautiful. And one of those is a serving. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 
So we're okay. going to put these to the side. Yeah, now we're going to add the ar aromatics, right. right? And then we've got that nice fond in the right. pan. The yeah. fond is something that's really important. That's all that flavor all that's that still in the pan. That's so in we're going to take our onions and our celery, yeah. or sorry, our onions and our tomato and our garlic. Yep. Yeah. We're going to drop that in. And, and then you left the garlic whole, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It'll, yeah, it'll cook It really down. obliterates yeah. if you don't. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to take my, I've got some oregano, I've got some rosemary, I've got some thyme. We're okay. just going to kind of give that a little twist. Okay. Kind of break that up yeah. and we're going to drop that in and it's going to crack, fizzle and pop. Uh-huh. All right. And then we're going to add in Lava. a little bit of fresh juniper. Juniper berries. Yep. Okay. Those are delicious. Okay. We're going to add in some black peppercorn. Yeah. It's smelling very good right now. And then we're going to also add in a few bay leaves. Okay, and you always leave those whole. Correct. You never want to chop yeah. those up because they're very dry and, you know, you could get that stuck in we're, your throat. We're going to strain this anyway, but yeah, there's just yeah. no reason to, uh, yeah. to do that. They're pretty intensely flavored yeah. anyway, so. <clears throat> so we're going to let that go just for a little bit. Okay, so what, about three or four minutes? Yeah, you can start to see that some yeah. of those onions are starting to color a yeah. little bit. Just, okay. We want to develop a little, a little bit of flavor. There. Yep. Yeah. Then we're gonna add some tomato paste. Okay, now why do you add the paste? So the paste adds acidity, mm -hmm. and it's gonna add color to our dish yeah. as well. Oof, so we're gonna let that tomato paste kind of get a little bit of color. We're gonna let yeah. it grab some of that vegetable. Yeah. Making a nice little paste here of herbs and aromatics, garlic, mm -hmm. spices. And then, wow. once we have all that mixed together, we're gonna take our red wine. Yes. Um, and we're gonna drop that right in. And that's gonna work its magic. So, again, more color, more flavor, more acid. We're gonna let this reduce by about two thirds. Okay. So this looks good. This is reduced down by about, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, at least half, two yeah, thirds. Yeah, you can tell, because there's the line where it was yep. originally. You, you can yeah. see in the pan too, when Look we clear it off, all that fond yeah. is now in that sauce. It's so rich looking, yeah. it, it really is. So the idea is to just keep putting more and more, more and more layers of flavor yeah. into this dish. So now we can put the meat back, right? Correct. Okay. So I'm gonna so, grab the meat. Okay. And How long do you think this is going to take to cook? These about are, an hour and a half? Would no, you say? a little bit longer than longer? that. I'd say probably two and a half, realistically. Two and a half. Okay. So if we cook them at the proper temp, they should probably... Are you cooking them at 325? Yeah, 350-ish is usually okay. kind of where I go. Uh-huh. Um, but again, Covered. low and slow is yeah. kind of the way to go with these. Yeah. So. Beautiful. All right, so we kind of place our asabuku in there. Any of the All drippings the that come going. off, we're yeah. going to pour that in. Good. Okay. And then, now that these are kind of nicely nestled into that kind of bed of goodness, uh -huh. we're going to add our stock, and our stock that we have is hot. Yes. Okay. okay. We're going into an oven. We're trying to cook these. So this is beef stock. Correct. Okay. This is brown veal stock. Okay. So there is absolutely no point in putting cold stock into a hot pan. All right. <laughs> no point. All right. All right. So we want this to be filled up so they're about halfway up. Yeah. I've got a little bit more stock here that I'm going to add to it, uh -huh. just to kind of get us up to the level we want to be at. And while we don't necessarily wow. want to boil these, because we really don't, we want to bring it to a boil yeah, before we put them into the yeah, oven. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're there. We're there, so. All right, and I'm gonna put these in the oven. And being that we're a commercial kitchen, we don't always have a tight fitting lid. Right, so we're gonna improvise okay. with a little sheet pan, but yeah. it'll still do the trick. Yeah. So let these go into the oven. Okay, two and a half hours later, we're gonna be eating that Beautiful. with Risotto, that's Correct. next, right? Yes, okay. that, that is the next thing we're gonna do. Let's do it. All right. Risotto is a method of cooking rice. And what we wanna do is we wanna use, uh, in this case, we're gonna use arborio rice. There are other types of rice you can use for risotto, but we wanna use a rice that's, uh, that's short and fat yeah. and that's full of starch. Exactly, because yep. that's what's going to give you the creaminess exactly, of exactly. the risotto. So you can't do this with just your instant rice. Right, right. You need okay. something that's short and fat. It yeah. looks a lot like sushi rice. It's a very different yeah. rice, but it's, uh, yeah. it's good for this application. So for the, for the rice, what we need is we need to, to chop some onion. Yeah. Uh, we need our rice, yeah. we need a little bit of white wine, and some stock. It's really a simple dish. Super easy it's, to make. It's a simple dish if you're using quality ingredients. So one of those ingredients, obviously, is the parmigiano reggiano Correct. that we're going to add to this. So yep. when you buy it, and I know you know this, you always buy it in a wedge like this. And you look on the rind to see those words, parmigiano reggiano. So I'm going to grate some of this for you. Okay. And you're going, what do you need, about a cup, I would say? Yeah, that's probably yeah. enough. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just cut some onion while we're doing that. Okay. We're gonna split our onion. So I know that this is one of those dishes that you always uh, have on hand for your clientele, but I wanna know how you got into this white apron business. Well, I was working in restaurants and uh, 
I had subsequently had moved uh, out of the Massachusetts area up to New Hampshire and uh, was working as a culinary instructor at that point and needed to supplement my income. Mm -hmm. So I started doing catering. That's what all chefs do when, yeah. when they're not making ends meet. They, uh, they decide they're gonna open a catering business. I was no different. Mm -hmm. And uh, started doing some, uh, some pharmaceutical lunches of all things. Wow. And um, one thing led to another and here we are. And here you are. So, yeah, and, and now 14 you, years later. 14 years later and it's safe to say that you're always in the kitchen, right? Pretty much always in the kitchen, yeah. yeah I've got, uh, I'm really lucky at this point, I've got great staff, I've got a really, really great crew. Um, and, and they help me with, with a lot of work. Um, but between being in the kitchen and being on site, it's uh, in season, it's, uh, a, full -time it's, it's job. a full time job for sure. It's two full time jobs, I like to say. But your roots are Sicilian. They are Sicilian, <laughs> yes. yes. So. I, uh, my, my dad's parents both uh, came to the States when they were babies. Yeah. Um, around the time of World War I. Yeah. And, uh, so I proudly wear that uh, that badge. Well, I'm half Sicilian too, so, okay. <laughs> the good half, right? Yes, yeah. so now we have our onions. You've got cheese, that's enough cheese? That's enough cheese for okay. us to get by, and we've got our rice. Okay. And we're gonna move over to the stove, and, and we're gonna go ahead and, and make our risotto. All right, so to make our risotto, we're gonna add in a couple tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and we're gonna add in a little bit of oil, a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And I was always taught to use butter and olive oil, um, to kind of pay homage to the northern and southern parts of Italy. So I always do that. Okay. Onions for me, like white onions. yeah, onions yeah. for me are like, I, I usually use like a Spanish onion. That's, uh -huh. that's what I buy for, for what we do. We use okay. hundreds and hundreds of pounds of those. Yeah. So we're gonna sweat out our onion. Yeah. So sweating it means that we're gonna cook it, but we're not gonna add any color. Right, we don't wanna brown it. Right, we just wanna kind of release all that flavor, the moisture, you can see they're really starting to melt really mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. Our pan's got high heat. Yeah. And if you wanna cook at high heat, you just gotta pay attention. If you don't wanna yeah. pay attention, turn the burner down. <laughs> then we're gonna add in our rice. Okay, all so right? that's about a cup of uh, arborio. Correct, correct. Okay. And so again, all I'm looking to do here is kind of combine the fat with the rice. Yeah. Kind of activate the starch a little bit so that the uh, the rice will be nice and creamy. And you want to keep that rice blonde too. Yep. So I you want to keep want it to... moving around. I don't right. want to get any color. There's a little bit of color coming, starting to come out here. So I want to take my white wine. Okay. And I just want to deglaze. So I'm okay. going to add about a cup of white wine. All right. Give or take. And you know it's really important to make risotto in a in a heavy duty, deep sided pan. For sure. For sure. Keeps that heat in. The it's reason really you use a, a pan that's got a little bit of height I, yep. is because as it lets off steam, the steam cools, it'll hit the right. side of the pan and roll back into, into the, the dish. dish. Mm -hmm. If you wait until the end to salt the rice, not good. it's not, as, it's not gonna okay. be as flavorful as okay. if you cook it this way. Are you using coarse? I'm using coarse yeah. kosher salt. Okay, yep. all right, good. So we're gonna put that in. And all right. now we are going to let this wine reduce down by about um, uh, a sec is mm -hmm. what you do. Okay, time for another espresso. <laughs> It looks like our rice is cooked yeah. and it's ready to go. So we we're should give taste it. A little it. try. Yeah, yep, we should see. Let's make sure it's al dente. Al dente. Mm hmm. Mm. Delicious. Almost doesn't need the butter and the cheese. Yeah, but we should add we're it. We're going to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so the butter gets whisked in there. Yep. I'm going to kind of beat that in there. And you see how loose. How loose the rice is. That's what I was saying about alonda on the wave. Right, so once the butter's just about there, I always turn off the heat at this point. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna add our Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano, about a cup, good. Mm -hmm. Painstakingly shredded for us. <laughs> and then the last thing, even though this has got delicious flavor, yeah. It's a little bit on the on the bland side color wise, so we're gonna add a little bit of fresh chives. Okay, that's good. I'm trying to give us a little spot of color. It's always a chef's prerogative to yeah. do what they want to well, do. You eat with your eyes too. Yeah. So you want to make sure it that looks, looks nice. And it looks delicious. Yeah, I think so okay. too. Now. All right, so now we're done with that. Mm. And now we can plate it. Now we can plate it with the asobuco. All right. So we've got our beautiful risotto. Yeah. I'm gonna take, it's nice and creamy and smooth. Beautiful, look at how beautiful that is. Very creamy, see it's not lumpy. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's just like falling nice, into place. Soft, fluffy pillow. Wow. We're gonna do this kind of, yeah. kind of family style. Mm. So we added our rice, beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And then I like to add a little bit of color to this plate. So I've pre-roasted off some, yeah. some beautiful jumbo asparagus Ooh. and some organic carrots. Oh, wonderful. So we're just going to take a little lump of this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna place that right there. It's gorgeous. And then we're gonna take our asabuco, this beautiful asabuco. Yes. And we're gonna extract it from the pan. And we're just gonna lay it kind of side by side on the dish. Jay, this is a work of art. This it is, is a beautiful gorgeous. plate. Beautiful plate. Mm. All right. Oh. And we're gonna take our sauce, which yeah. is beautiful. It's nappe. Abs it's we don't want to leave that behind. Coats the back of the spoon. Uh huh. And there's a couple different schools of thought on this. You can strain, strain it, it out or not strain it. We yeah. chose not to strain it. We don't want to strain it. No, we, we want like all that. These vegetables. We're going to kind of take and just put a little, oh, little coating of sauce over the top. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. This is tough love, boy. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> got to do it though, right? <laughs> we started with tough meat, but boy, that looks so tender. Yeah, it looks it looks really, really, really good. I would be happy if that came to my table. Me too. Yeah. And guess what? We're not done, because now we're going to make dessert. All right. Jay, have you ever had a dessert, a tart, made with Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese? Uh, if I did, I, I can't remember it. OK, so today we're going to make one. Okay. I think it's perfect to go with the asobuco, because that's such an elegant dish. I think this is an elegant dessert. So what you want to do is have a 9-inch a or a 10-inch tart pan with a removable bottom, like this. See? and. You just want to brush this with some butter, getting in all those little crevices around the edges, too. A lot of people don't do this, but I think it makes it easier to get the tart out. Oh, for sure. You know? For sure. So just a little melted butter around the pan. Because we're going to make the shell first, and we have to blind bake it before we do the filling. So there's our, our shell. Now, for the crust, this is really easy. Anybody can do this. We're using cookies. These are amaretti cookies. Mm. Amaretti means little bitter things. They're pretty delicious. Yeah. I say. So what They're I need good. is for you to smash those up. Okay. Smash them up. We need right. about you need about a cup and a half to two cups, depending on the size of the tart shell that you're using. So I would say to be on the safe side, about a cup and a half. Sure. So we want to smash them up, and you can buy them like that in a bag, or you can get them like this. Look at this. Isn't this cute? Here they are, they're all wrapped up individually like this in these pretty papers, see? And they come like this. So you can get them like that or you can get them like this, see? Oh, nice. That's beautiful. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So, either does this, way. Does this look like how you want it? That's great. Okay. So with that, we're going to use some hazelnuts. So if you don't know what hazelnuts are, there they are. If you didn't want to use hazelnuts, you could use walnuts, mm -hmm. you could use almonds, but I like the texture of the hazelnuts. So here we have the hazelnuts. We've already ground them up. We're leaving a little texture on them. So I want you to put that in here okay. with, the, uh, with the nuts. So there's our Amoretti cookies. And then with this, I'm going to add just a quarter of a cup of sugar because you've got sugar already in the, in the cookies and mix that around. And then we want some butter. So I would say about six tablespoons of butter goes in. So you want to make that into a crust. So you just mix it up so everything is all really well combined. Mm. It's so easy. You can make the crust the day ahead if you want to. Because you, you want something that is going to be um, not soggy. So that's why we're going to blind bake it first. So then it goes right into our tart shell. And you can pat that down for me if sure. you want, just going around the sides. Okay. And what we want to do is have our oven on at 350 degrees preheated. And we're going to bake this as is, without the filling, for about 15 minutes. You want to get a little, you want, you'll know when you start to smell the nuts and also you'll start to see that it takes on a little, a little more color around the edges. So isn't that easy? Very easy. You just very, put very it easy. in the pan and it's ready to go. All right. So pat it down really well. All right, so now that can go in the oven, and while that's baking, we can make the filling. All right. Now the filling is made with mascarpone. We're still in that northern region of Italy mm -hmm. because we made the asobuco, and mascarpone actually, you know, you could buy it at a grocery store, it comes in a package like this, or you could make your own. If you went to the Chao Italia website, you could find out how to do that. But this is a high-fat cheese, if you couldn't find mascarpone for this, you could use cream cheese. Okay. But I like the flavor of the mascarpone. So you want uh, one cup, eight ounces, 
and I'm going to add a cup of sugar and the surprise ingredient, a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. Yes, this is going to give this a really beautiful taste. And Jay, if you can whip me two egg whites, sure. we're going to fold that into this mixture. And then we're, go and we're also going to add a little bit of lemon and some lemon juice. So get the uh, cheese in. You need about a cup of the Parmigiano Reggiano. And then I have two egg yolks. So they're going in. And we're whipping the white, so that's going to just kind of lighten this, this mixture some. Mm -hmm. Egg yolks go in. Look at the color of those yolks. So beautiful. Isn't that Where do beautiful? You get the eggs? Well, I actually, you know, my painter has chicken, so I always get my eggs from him. Oh, there's nothing better than fresh, fresh eggs. eggs. Yeah, I just love the color. It's great for baking. Okay. My, my daughter Olivia actually raises her own chicken. Does she? Yeah. Oh. So I eat fresh eggs all the time. Okay, so that is the consistency of that right okay, now. A little bit going? more. Let me let me get a little bit of uh, zest going here. Yeah, I gave you the hard job. That's okay. Yeah. Keep that elbow tucked in and you can so, do it forever. So I'm going to put some zest in just to give that a little <laughs> zing. And probably a little bit more. I love this tart because you can make it early in the day. Yeah. And you could make the crust a couple days ahead of time, just keep it in the refrigerator. Really great when you need it, it's ready to go. And you could also make it in mini sizes if you wanted to do in little individual tart pans, you could do that. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of lemon juice. The color is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I got a couple pits in there, but you know it's homemade then. <laughs> right. Okay. How are we looking here. Stiff enough? That's looking good. Yeah. Oh, it's soft peaks. Okay. Okay. A little bit more. Take out that. I thought I saw one more pit in there, but... Okay, so why don't we fold that in here. Okay. Fold that in. Yeah, you go ahead and fold it in. Fold it in. And when the tart shell is about five minutes cooled after you take it out of the oven, we're gonna spread this mixture in the shell and bake this at 350 for about 30 minutes or so, just until the, the uh, filling is set and it just kind of jiggles a little bit in the middle. Gorgeous. Mm. Jay, you see how that just that crust just set right up? Yeah, wow, that's amazing. So now it's hard like that, but that's good because we're going to put this moist filling okay. right over the top of it. Wow. But the crust is not going to get soggy. We're going to put this back in the oven. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Now you could serve this with a, you know, a layer of sour cream over the top or whipped cream. Mm. I actually think it's good just by itself. Yeah. So it's ready to go. So 350 okay. for about 30, 35 minutes when it's starting to brown on top, it's, you know, good it's to good go. to go. All right. All right, so put that in the oven. So there you have it now. Let's eat. Let's eat. Today, we actually did some cooking from northern Italy. So, yes. Jay, let's tell them what you made. Well, we made a, uh, like you said, a classical uh, northern Italian dish. We braised some asabuco. We made a nice creamy risotto with some parmigiano reggiano. Mm -hmm. uh, really delicious, unctuous, wonderful dish. Ready to just fall right off the bone. It sure does. It is good. Following that, we made this. A torta di parmigiano reggiano, which is a torta, a sweet tart, made with grated parmesan cheese. Mm mascarpone cheese, eggs, we folded in some egg whites, gave it a little lemon and lemon zest. Mm. And it's the perfect dessert in a wonderful crust made with hazelnuts and amaretti cookies. That crust is ridiculously good, yes. This has been so much fun, Jay. I agree. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. I'm Jay Curcio. Ciao. Ciao.